We're at Fort Hood, a day after the dreadful tragedy, and we're talking to Sarah Elix. Elix. And where were you when you heard about this? I was actually in line to pay at the commissary, which is about a quarter of a mile to three quarters of a mile away from the SRP center. Um, somebody had just said that there was a shooting on base, and this is a large area, and so I Jet. really didn't know what to Jet. think about that. And um, I go outside to put my groceries in the car, and I, from the field adjacent to the commissary, I just see airlift after airlift going off. I, th I think I saw three or four just one after the other, and I knew then that this was something much bigger than just a shooting. Um, it was really devastating. I just stood there and cried for a minute because... You just don't know what was happening, and later on we found out what was going on, and it's just shocking. We're just all devastated. Was this connected with the graduation? Um, as far as I know, it was not connected with the graduation. I don't know much about the graduation. I believe it was Central Texas College, um, but I, there's not really much information going on. Um, where this occurred, I believe, was right next door to the graduation. Um, the House Theater and the SRP Center, they do do um, debriefs and stuff at House Theater, but as far as I know, the two are not connected. So the debrief is where people come after they return from action? Usually. Um, I know when my husband returned from uh, in June, he went there that day after he got back and they had several debriefings. Um, and stuff in the theater. It's a large area, so they can hold a large amount of soldiers there at once. Um, it's, de it's different from the SRP center where they go to get their medical evaluations and stuff before they, and before they leave and, before, and right after they come back. See. And so your husband, what, what is his status now? He is fine. He um, is with a different unit here. He was actually training and they pulled them in from training to come and help do guard. And so he's busy all day. I saw him from about 1 o'clock this morning to about 5.30 when he left, and I haven't seen him since. And I honestly don't know when I'm going to see him, but that's fine. I know that he's here doing what he needs to do to keep the rest of us safe. And do you feel you need any help? I don't feel I need any help. You know, I was trying to think of anything that I could do to help, and I've just kind of prayed, and everybody I've talked to has prayed for the families that were involved for the people who have lost their life, for the wounded that are still in the hospital, just pray. That's all you can do. There's not really much for us to do. Do you have any feeling about the shooter having been a psychiatrist? That was a shock to me. I was blown away when I heard that. Um, I couldn't believe, first of all, that this was another soldier. Um, you know, talking to other soldiers, they said, they would have preferred that it be a civilian because these are one of this is one of their brothers this is people that they trust down there to protect them with their lives and this this man just comes in and just starts killing people it's it's devastating um hearing that he was a psychiatrist that specialized in this kind of thing i i i was at a loss for words and i'm still at a loss people have asked me about it and there i just don't even know what to say well when he's ready to talk physically perhaps we'll find out more I hope so I you know I think everybody deserves answers these were people that were preparing to leave the country they volunteered for this they did not volunteer to be here on their home base this is our community this is our family these are the people that we trust and that we feel that I feel personally that I've been robbed of my comfort right now because this it's just shocking we're just speechless Thank you for talking to us. Thank you.